All right, now for something completely different. Um, <laughs> diets, all right. Oh, sorry about that. We've all heard of uh, high protein diets. We've heard of uh, low carb diets. How about an ice cream diet? Well, it, people talk about it. It must work, right? Um, so we're talking about diets of buildings here. Um, this is a graphic that uh, came from the city of Vancouver, actually. Uh, Brent might recognize it. Looking for my notes. They're gone somewhere. Um, in any case, that, that is a graphic of the ecological footprint of a building. Uh, we've all heard of the ecological footprint. This is uh, taking a look at the building's contribution to the ecological footprint. It starts with single family, no suite houses on the far left, over to high rise on the far right. And uh, so we have um, basically a, uh, a typo different typologies, uh, work done by the city. I'm not going to argue for or against it, it's just a perspective from the city. But if you take a look at it, the vast majority of, of houses in Vancouver are actually are now uh, zoned for single family with a suite. And uh, even more so, very close to that is uh, uh, carriage houses, coach houses, what they call it here, which is laneway houses. And if you take a look at those graphs, those, uh, those show that, uh, believe it or not, and it, it's quite striking <laughs> given the, um, what we're told about eco-density, that, that in fact, Oddly, single-family homes with a suite and a coach house, or you know, which is the current zoning, are in fact more environmentally friendly than high-rise apartments, which are among the worst in the category of things we have here. There are some single-family houses, but everything is zoned now. I'm talking about zoning. Everything is zoned for, for multifamily. So we take a look at this, uh, this sort of set of typologies, and we're not looking at terribly green buildings over on the far right, which is what we're, are proposed here. Here's what Europe has, all right? Uh, and there's a reason they built so many of these, because if you, if you go back to this graphic, the, the best examples, of the, the lowest uh, carbon footprint buildings are townhomes or, um, or apartment buildings, low-rise low apartment buildings. They will always do better uh, than, than a high-rise, and there are various reasons. So it's a beautiful site. And these are, these are essentially uh, townhouses from, from many centuries ago that were transferred and transformed into apartments. Uh, I'm going to, um, I have to um, show this next picture, but, but thank Michael for taking it. Michael Geller took this picture. Uh, another beautiful place, and you know, he goes to beautiful places and takes wonderful pictures of them. So here's, here's some buildings in, in the bright sun <laughs> uh, that are, what, six stories tall. And uh, again, this is a typology that works uh, from an environmental footprint, footprint standpoint. These don't, and they don't for a variety of reasons. One is because glass whether it's triple plane, pane argon filled, has a R value, a, a resistance to heat transfer value of you know, maybe two or three if you're really stretching it, but you're talking about two or three at most. The concrete generally is thermally bridged. It's not providing any, any protection from, other than from wind, essentially. These things, these, these buildings have an R value of about three, maybe four, on a best day, all right? The average single family home, which isn't the end all be all by any stretch, or the average town home, is gonna have an R value of about 20. 12, 14 in the walls, 30 on the roof, 40. Easy to do 20 and 40 now, or even 50. These things, you know, basically use about uh, 10 times more energy to heat than the lower rise houses that all some of us like. There's no way around it. These things are dinosaurs uh, when it comes to anything, whether you believe in peak oil or just the higher prices of energy, these things are, are a, a disaster waiting to happen. And there's nothing you can do about them. You can't retrofit them. And again, don't believe me, believe the city. You can also believe Monty Paulson. He wrote a fantastic series of articles on building typologies. And he said very clearly yeah, that the, the, the world judgment the, from the Passive House movement, from the uh, Architecture 2030 movement is that uh, Mid-rise, low-rise apartment buildings, townhouses are, are the preferred building model from an ecological standpoint. Uh, here's the article that, that he wrote, and uh, I'll read you a little quote here. The prototypical Vancouver condo building, towers of poorly insulated glass separated by heat radiating concrete balconies, provide about a tenth of the insulation of a wood frame home. And whatever your wood frame home is, it's going to be lower. It has to be by law. Um, finally, uh, I just want to burn this into your memory. The, the colors came out actually quite different than they were in the original. But uh, we're talking about eco-density here. We're talking about uh, trying to live up to our carbon footprint. Well, this isn't the way to go. 
And uh, I don't, you know, whatever you think about views, if you care about the Earth, that's another reason. Uh, if you, certainly, I have to say, I'm very pleased that uh, Carnegie Community Action Project here because is here because they care about people. So we got people on the Earth, and we've got eyes. Any other comments? <laughs> Thank you. Also, I'd like to, this is uh, Randy Chatterjee, Randy Chatterjee, and we'd like to thank you also for the uh, Chatterbox films on live streaming right now on the video. Thank you very much.